everyone, it's Mindy with Mindy Egan Design and today's video is going to be making some backgrounds for my stamped images with the alcohol inks. I just recently purchased these and I am having a blast making these backgrounds so I hope you enjoy this video. So I'm going to start off with a couple different shades of blue and then also a shade of purple in the alcohol inks. I just randomly grabbed some, any would work. I was going for a night sky theme or an underwater theme, so that's why I chose these colors and I'm going to be using that on the Yupo paper. I'm going to be starting off with this brown craft mat that I have. The alcohol inks do kind of make a mess and stay in the mats, so I'm going to be using this brown one for now. And the first thing I'm going to do is I just grabbed a piece of Yupo paper and randomly placed drops around it. And I'll tell you, watching this while editing the video was really cool. I mean, this is fun to do in person, but when you're seeing it at the angle that your camera is and you're watching these alcohol inks spread out, it is really super cool to watch from this angle. I just had to say that. So I'm going through this Yupo paper with the different varieties, just placing them all over the place and letting them do their business, moving around like they do. And I do have a card listed on my blog that I created a nighttime sky, um, kind of going for the Northern Lights look. And when I was originally doing that project, I couldn't open my uh, alcohol solution. It, the cap was screwed on too tight and that was my fault because I had tightened it to make sure if my son got into my crafts, that he couldn't open that and apparently I had more muscle than I thought I did and I had to go and have my husband open it for me so I didn't video that first one this is actually a remake and I'm gonna be doing an ocean scene so I'll have a couple different backgrounds to show you this one I just really liked the blues and the purples I thought these just really looked good together I loved watching them move around the paper so this first one, I'm not using any of that blending solution. I'm just using straight alcohol inks and letting them move around. And then as they move, there is a little bit of pooling on the edges, a little bit of excess. And when that dries, that can become sticky. So what I end up doing is just grabbing a paper towel and dabbing that off. And the paper towel does leave a little um, marks on there, which is fine. You can totally leave that. I just kind of went back in and dropped a few more drops over that area where it was a little bit too much. This actually would look really cool in an ocean scene because it, you know, from my angle, like I said, it kind of looks like splatters of water coming up actually. So this is the second background that I did. And this one I had more in the mind of the ocean look. So that's where you're going to see these vibrant colors popping through. And I sped this up because this these are really quick and simple to make. I think with these backgrounds, it only took me maybe five minutes. So they're really fast. They're gorgeous. One thing I don't see very often is um, these alcohol backgrounds with stamped images. Now, I love to Copic color. If you've seen any of my videos or my cards on my blog, I love Copic coloring. I love the stamped images. And these alcohol ink backgrounds do look gorgeous just as it, just as is. I'm sorry. Uh, but I wanted to incorporate them with my cards. So that's what you're going to be seeing me do today, how I was able to use these backgrounds without it overpowering my stamped images. So there I just added some of that blending solution where it pushes that color away. And I'm going to let that sit and dry a little bit. And then I'm going to pull over the one we just did. And that's pretty dry already. And it's just gorgeous. I love these. These are so pretty, you'll never get the same thing twice. Now that my backgrounds are complete, I'm gonna move on to the Copic coloring of my images. For this one, I'm going to be using, be using Oceans of Love, and this is from Crafting Kimmy Stamps. Um, I believe at the time of this video right now, it is unavailable, but if you click on the Notify Me button, you will be notified when it is back in stock. Another good option if you want to create an ocean scene is you can also use the stamp set Keep Swimming that has some really cute critters on it and some snorkeling kids. So that is another option if you want to do an ocean scene. So what I'm going to be doing here for mine, uh, for these images, is I'm going through with my darkest color and I'm going to do that on all of the images. I'll go through the darkest color and I'm going to blend them out going from darkest to lightest. I'll have all of those colors listed on the video right when I start coloring the image and I'll also have it listed down below in the description area on YouTube and also on my blog. 
So that's what I'm doing right now is just going through and blending out the darkest color and I'll keep doing that. One thing with the whale is one of my markers that I wanted to use, I think it was B91. I didn't realize was dried up. I just bought reinkers and I did not get that one. So I need to get myself that reinker, but it was pretty dried up. You just saw that there. So what I ended up doing was I grabbed B41 and it still worked out great. I just went over the entire area that I wanted to be the lightest. And typically when I color my images, I go over them twice no matter what. So this is actually going to be really helpful. I can deepen those shadow areas. I'm going to bring in my second color just a little bit more since that B41 wasn't really what I had planned originally. So I'm just going over each of these colors again to deepen those shadow areas. I am coloring this on Nina Solarite cardstock. That is my preferred choice of Copic coloring. Um, I mainly actually started using that cardstock because that is what I use for all of my cards. So I know that whether I'm cutting out the images or not, my whites are going to match because sometimes you get an off color white and that just personally bothers me when I make my cards. So if I'm using the same cardstock throughout my entire card, I know it's all going to match. So that's kind of why I stuck with the uh, Nina Solar White. So I'm just going through adding a little bit of highlight on the belly of that whale. And then I'm going to come in and I'll start on the dolphin. And that is going to be the same process. I'm coming in with the darkest color, which I have listed at the top, the BG 49, 15, and 32. And I'm just going to come in and blend those out. I don't think too hard, I guess, on the shadows. I add in where I think they would be as best, to the best of my ability. I'm not an expert in Copic coloring. I just really enjoy, I just really enjoy coloring. You kind of feel like a kid again. So I add them in the best that I can. And if something's off, I'm totally okay with it. I just blend those out. I do like to have that dimension to my animals, to my critters or any image that I stamp and color. So I try to add the shadows as best as I can. And then going over that again to deepen those shadows up. And I'll add just a smidge for the belly. And I'll do that for the rest of my images, the octopus, uh, the little sailor hat, and the crab. A couple of these I didn't end up using on my card, but I am going to save them for a future project. So now we'll start on the octopus in which I decided to color it purple. I kind of wanted to have a nice color variety of critters on my card. So I'm coming in with the V17, 15, and 12. And I'm starting out just with that darkest color, throwing in some shadow areas, and then blending that out with my V15. And then I'll follow it up with the V12 to blend everything out. I do end up using the R11 for the underside of the octopus. I didn't do any shading down there just because those were really small areas and you don't have to add dimension if you don't want to to every single area. So I just popped in the R11 just to have that so it wasn't plain white down there. And I really liked how these critters came out. I thought it was a nice color variety to go with my card. And honestly, I think purple and reds are one of my favorite a uh, couple blends to color in if it's just because I can get nice deep shadows with them but these are one of my favorite color combos so I'll just finish blending that out again with the V12 and finish off my little octopus these would also be great images for masking because they are a really simple shape to cut out I do end up running them through my scanning cut machine which I absolutely love that machine but you can also fussy cut too if you prefer so now on to the crab. He is a tiny image, so this one doesn't take a lot of effort. I have two colors, R39 and R24. I just go in with that dark color again, and then over the top that with R24, and then just back in again with that dark color. This one you don't have to spend a lot of time on just because it is a smaller image. And then the sailor hat, which I just popped in 
with W432 and 0. And I did try and leave a little bit of white space. It came out a little bit darker than I wanted. So in the end, I did go over that um, couple areas with my colorless blender. Okay, now on to putting all of this together. So I did take one of my backgrounds and I ran that through my die cut machine. So I have a stitched border around there and it's gonna leave some white space on my card. And this is how I'm going to make it so it works with my critters. So it doesn't overpower my images. My images still have a focal point and yet you can still appreciate that beautiful background. So I'm using the sentiment, which is also on the uh, Oceans of Love stamp set and I just stamped that off in the corner. I'm gonna add this white strip to the middle of my card, and then I'm gonna have my critters going across. I kinda wanted them swimming in it to look like it was actually ocean water and swimming, but when I was playing around, it was just too much. Everything was kinda getting lost, and the card was a little bit confusing looking, so I thought adding this white strip was a nice way to incorporate my critters and still have this gorgeous background. And my little crab looks like he's holding up the sentiment, which I thought was just really fun how that worked out. So I'm going to go ahead and attach all of this. I'm using some double-sided tape to just make sure that sticks down really well. I believe this is the half inch. This holds really good. This is one of my favorite adhesives. I use this quite a bit on all of my cards. And then I'm just going to get that panel added to my card and push it down and this is completely dry. I didn't have to wait too long to finish that. And then I'm gonna attach that strip to the middle of the card as well. And then once I have that lined up on my um, card, I can go ahead and start attaching the animals. So I hope this really helps you in being able to still copic color your images and add them to these beautiful backgrounds without it overpowering and fighting for attention is kind of how I look at it. They're all fighting for attention. They're both fun and awesome, and you want to be able to see both of them. So I thought this was a really good way to do that. I also have some more pictures on my blog. I'll have the link provided down below that you can take a look at. I have a beautiful nighttime sky there. I really wish I would have recorded that one because, like I said, you'll never have the same thing twice. But there are just so many different possibilities when it comes to the alcohol inks. I, I can't wait to play more with them because they are just so fun. So now for a finishing touch, I'm going to come in with these pearls from Little Things by Lucy. I thought they kind of looked like bubbles and would be a fun thing to add to the card. So I'm just going to grab a few here and there with my jewel picker and I'm going to add them to the card with my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. This is one of my uh, favorite liquid adhesives that I like to use. It has a great nozzle on it, comes out great and it has a really strong hold. So some of these pearls that I'm adding, some are blue, some are kind of like a cream color, and I'm just gonna add those around here and there. So like I said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more projects that I have coming up. I'll be having some stenciling and more alcohol inks. I really enjoyed playing with this. This is a lot of fun. They are gorgeous backgrounds to create with these, so I hope this has inspired you to create. Thank you so much for stopping by.